Sir Jonk was speaking at the military think tank organization, the Royal United Services Institute in London last night. He took the opportunity to review the military operations in both Iraq and Afghanistan. First, Iraq. The result is that we're now close to the stage where we can alter fundamentally our mission in Iraq. We intend to move to the sort of bilateral military partnership that we have with other friends in the region and to work with the Iraqis in those areas and on those issues where they want our support. That transition will dramatically reduce the number of people we have on the ground in Iraq. Now, there's been a great deal of speculation that those reductions will be matched by a concomitant increase in Afghanistan and some confused reporting on the issue. So let me be clear about this. We're engaged in two significant military campaigns, and our top priority is to deliver operational success in both. Naturally, we keep our force levels under constant review. At the same time, though, these are campaigns that require continued effort over long periods. And as I've said on numerous occasions, we're currently doing more than we're structured or resourced to do for the long term. So reducing our operational tempo to a more sustainable level as quickly as possible is an important consideration in the strategic balance that we seek to strike. So we cannot simply make a one-for-one one transfer from Iraq to Afghanistan. I'm not saying that we couldn't or shouldn't do more in Afghanistan if we judge that to be necessary. What I am saying is that we have to be able to sustain whatever we do. Sir Jock then turns specifically to Afghanistan and UK involvement there. Our task is to reduce the insurgency to a level that poses no significant threat to progress in Afghanistan, to ensure that core al-Qaeda does not return to the country, and to ensure that Afghanistan remains a legitimate state and is able to handle its own security. But Afghanistan's challenges will be far from ended when we achieve those aims. Let's just think for a moment about the wider endeavor that provides the context for our objectives. We're trying to help what is, in many respects, a medieval country start to move towards the 21st century. Such an undertaking can have no short-term endpoint. So in the broader sense, success in Afghanistan looks like each year being a bit better than the one before. It has to be seen as a journey continued rather than a destination reached. He spoke about the relationship with Pakistan in fighting terrorism. The Pakistanis are facing a hugely complex situation. They'll have their bad days and their good days. But it seems to me and to other close observers that they're starting at last down a more promising track. We shouldn't get carried away here. A few promising signs don't equate to sustained delivery. And of course, the recent tragic events in Mumbai could set us all back considerably. If tensions between India and Pakistan continue to escalate, there's a real risk that they and we could be diverted from the real issue, dealing with the terrorist groups who perpetrate such criminal and barbaric acts. And if we're to deal with them effectively, it seems to me that we have to do two things. We have to take action, not merely express our outrage and our sympathy. But just as importantly, we have to act together. Nothing would warm the terrorists' hearts more than knowing that they'd succeeded in setting state against state. A strong and incisive speech setting out the UK military agenda for the future.